All right, time for another video. Let me talk to you guys about some batteries. We got a bunch of these, over 5,000 of these uh, modem cells, uh, battery packs, right? These are the Pegatron Model VP, no, PV013. And the cool thing about these is that they are very low cycles, if any cycles, because they are from modems, like all the other modem cells. Uh, and they have very good quality cells. I believe these are, uh, I don't remember which cells they are, but we're gonna open them up right now, and we're gonna see. And these are 2,600 milliamp hours, and they're all testing like 90, 95% capacity. Well, actually, yeah, they're, some of them are, are, are coming up to like 100% capacity, right? So I have taken five packs at random from the big stack, big pallet of, of these that we got in. And I am gonna show you how to take them apart. The other good, cool thing about this is that you can take them apart very easily. They come apart very clean, right? They don't have glue and stuff. And so therefore uh, they're very good for salvaging. So let's get started and let me take these apart so I show you how to do it. All right, so here are the tools that you are going to need, very basic stuff. We have the scraper uh, that is linked on the product page for that. Uh, you either need the handle or some pliers like this. I'm ghetto, so I like to use those. And then a hammer and some of these little uh, pliers to cut the snip pliers, right? Um, and then uh, they work really good on the floor here. So let's try that now. You take this tool, which is the scraper, then you just whack them here. See that? And then you flip it over. And the cool thing about this scraper is that the blade is shallow and so therefore you're not gonna puncture the, the cells when you do this. And then once you do that, oh, still needs a bit, a little bit more. There we go. There we go. There we go, look at that. And we have the cells, which are LG uh, B31s, right? Let's do another one. Ooh, these ones are different. See, here's the cool thing about these. This is how easy they come off. The tape is not even grabbing that much. All right, once we have them all set aside like this, you've taken them off of the thing. Now you just use these little clippers here and you cut these. So just like that, you end up with 16 cells. They're all pretty much clean. Not a lot of uh, glue on them, uh, which is cool because then it doesn't mean that you have to replace the sleeves. We have two different types of cells here, but uh, when you look at the spec sheets, you realize that these cells are almost identical. Uh, and so they're just, for some reason, they have a different model number. The next step to do is to test them, right? To put them on a charger, this charger tester, and let's do that now. All right, here is my testing uh, station. A word of caution, there are different types of these chargers and they will give you slightly different results. This one here, for example, will give you slightly larger uh, capacity numbers than this one here. So I feel like I have to say that because I've in the past have shown results from this one and then when people use some other type uh, and their numbers differ a tiny bit then they've asked me for refunds right or you know asked me for discounts because i i need to guarantee this these are used cells 
right? And all I could do, I can't test every single one. They're on tested cells. All I can do is test a batch, a small number, a random sample of them, and, and then I can show you what those are. But there's no guarantee that you're going to get exactly what, uh, what the label says here, or I can't tell you in a specific number, uh, capacity number. So that's why these are affordable, because you're taking a, a, a bit of a chance, not a huge amount of chance, because these are pretty consistent. And so, and that's how I can sell them. But they're nonetheless, uh, I can't guarantee the numbers, any numbers on these guys. So on this one, this is the sand flare. For example, it's very easy to load them. All you have to do is push them there, push them there. And this is one of my favorite ones because all you do is once they're loaded like this, um, you disconnect it from the top you connect it there and then you press this mode button one two two times and then all of them are already set to normal test so these are going to charge up discharge then capacity measure and then they're going to charge all the way back up so when they're done you're going to come in here and they're all going to be fully charged i'm going to do half of these uh gray ones on this one and then half of them this one and the same thing with the pink ones so that at the end we can see the difference as and you will see that all of these ones on these type of chargers are going to be slightly bigger or slightly more capacity than this ones Right, it's been about 24 hours and these are finally done look here's one of the main reasons why I like this sand flare one better than the light of color you can literally see each cell what the capacity has been right and you can see them all without having to press any buttons whereas this one here in order to see what this one is you have to press this button and then the other one you have to press that button and this one so you can't just come in here and write what each cell is, which is what we normally do when we are salvaging these cells. So uh, the only thing that there are some differences, like for example, look at these. These are all 26, 28, 26, 26, 25, 26, 25, right? Well, these same come from the same pack and look, these are 25, 40, 24, 90, 23, right? So these are slightly less than those. Those are probably about a hundred uh, milliamp hours larger. Uh, so those tend to register a little higher than these. But that's basically what you're gonna get. These are 2600 milliamp hour cells. That's what the label says when they're new. And see, these are 2628, 2618, 27, 18, 25, 46, right? So this is like about 50, uh, about 54 milliamp hours less in the original, which is, you know, still like 95%. 2,500, so this was about 100 milliamp hours uh, less. But of course, if you put this same cell on this one, then it would be about 2,600, which is 100% of the capacity. Um, and then the other thing you can check is, of course, is the internal resistance. And like this one, for example, yeah, it's it's, Re, uh, registering kind of high uh, internal resistance. Uh, let's look at that. 92. Uh, 130. So these are either because they've been around without being cycled for a long time. Uh, if you cycle them again, then you will see all these numbers start lowering. And so, of course, under normal use, that's just gonna happen, right? So, also another thing that happens because these have been stored, unused for a long time. A lot of, when you read these codes, you're gonna see that these have been a couple years to anything between two to five years. So what happens is that sometimes on the first cycles, what happens is that these will be warm and sometimes hot. But then what you do is you can put them through multiple later cycles and then you will see that these will stabilize the internal resistance will go down and the cells will stop getting hot 
uh, while charging and discharging. So there you go, those cells are pretty good value and you can find them on my website, jack35.com uh, to build anything from DIY power walls to DI power walls, that's what we're doing with these. So thank you for watching this video. We'll see you guys on the next one, bye.